Well, it's not only communication that is caught off after Helene. In some communities, roads are impassable, and they're having a hard time getting access to life-saving medication. News Channel 9's Latricia Thomas has a story of one couple that had to rely on a friend and his creativity to get what they needed. Latricia. Josh and Kim, this is the bridge that crosses from Greene County over into Washington County in Northeast Tennessee. And this is what stood between that family and the pharmacy, a collapsed bridge that put them in what could have been a very dangerous situation and not just because of this flood water. Imagine driving over this bridge in the middle of a storm to get home to your wife and then the bridge ended up collapsing not even a minute later. only way in and the only way out is through these bridges. Madeline Scott lives in Chucky, Tennessee. TDOT says this is one of five bridges that Helene destroyed in the northeast part of the state. Her husband made it home, but the couple then discovered another. So my husband's a type 1 diabetic. Life-threatening problem. We only had half a bottle left. So I was like, I don't know how long we're going to be stuck here. I don't know what to do. In need of insulin with no cell phone service, power or water and no way out. The Scots found one way to get in touch with a friend. My husband had radioed out to one of his partners um, on shift and that was the only way we were able to get out. That friend, a fellow firefighter, met up with Madeline's parents who picked the insulin up from the pharmacy. We went to the shortest bridge possible that we knew of. Um, and you could actually see them on the other side and they could see us. From the other side of that collapsed bridge, the friends used a drone to carry the insulin across, along with a little comic relief in a stressful situation. And I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> it's a can of dip and insulin. <laughs> Leaving the Scots grateful for creative friends and modern technology. Having that was just a, like such a sigh of relief, you know, and I know that there's so many people um, you know, who are who are not fortunate enough to have contact with people on the other side. Now, one of the bridges that was covered with water later became passable when the water level went down, giving the Scots access to main roads again. They are now spending their days helping their neighbors who received more damage than their property did. Josh. Latricia, well, thank you. Crews of the Tennessee Department of Transportation plan to assess damage and inspect all state owned bridges over water in these six affected East Tennessee counties, a total of 310 of, of those bridges. We appreciate you making News Channel 9 your trusted source for local news. For more updates on this and other breaking news stories, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications.